All right, welcome to the Cardano for Climate weekly meeting. This past week, we've had a lot of activity around the community. People have been going to the Cardano Summit, which happened in the main summit in Lausanne, Switzerland, but also in 50 other locations around the planet. So I'm sure a lot of us attended different events and experienced lots of different amazing things connected with community um, and enjoyed sharing some space with fellow Cardanians, if that's the word for us. Um, so today we're going to do a little retrospective here at C4C just to, because we did do a number of initiatives to help support various presentations, events, and locations around the planet. So let's um, reflect, see what went well, celebrate those things that um, really stood out. Um, we want to give shout outs to people that really stepped in and helped and then maybe focus on things that we could improve for next time. Um, so, but before we jump into the retrospective, maybe we'll open it up a little bit for people to just talk about how the summit went really quickly. Um, Lawrence, how did things go in Toronto? Um, yeah, it was great. Yeah, we had a good good turnout, over definitely over 100 people there. Um, and um, so there's a few presenters and I presented. And um, as kind of mentioned it, it was, uh, you know, it was, was well received. Um, you know, I basically was talking about, you know, four impact projects um, that are building our Cardiano. And I think it was good to show, you know, real use cases of blockchain technology. And uh, people were quite appreciative of, of that. And that kind of, by the, by the end of my talk, I, you know, I had everyone's full attention. Everyone was, you no, know, oh, that's interesting. So it was, it went well, so. Awesome. That's great. Um, anybody else attend a, a summit either in Lausanne or locally that wants to report back on your experience? Yeah, I I helped host the Mexico City Summit and it went really great. We had a lot of speakers. Uh, a lot of people turned out. I, I didn't think uh, there was going to be much people. It was over 100 people. And it was really nice because we didn't really meet, know the community in Mexico City. And we ended up with a telegram with over 50 people. So it's it's a good start for us to get to know the community and do things in the future. Awesome. Nice to hear from Mexico City. Um, anybody else? I know a couple of you were actually in Lausanne. How did things go there? Uh, I, can, I can talk about Lausanne. Um, did, uh, do you hear me okay? Is my volume okay? Yeah, that's great. Hmm. Um, I thought it was really, it was great. There was a ton of our projects there. Um, Yoram did an amazing job of getting our people on the main stage, on the, like, in a lot of the side rooms. It was amazing. Like, it's one of the few I go to a lot of crypto conferences. It's one of the few crypto conferences that there was so much impact on um, on impact. And I give a lot of credit to that, to this group. I don't know who, who did what behind the scenes, but it was really, really impressive how much of the stuff from this group showed up uh, on the different stages. So that was a really huge success for this community. I could also see that the foundation has tremendous respect for you guys. So Yarm introduced me to some of the people from the foundation and they were very open and told me stuff that, you know, probably shouldn't have said. And, um, you know, about what's really going on with the foundation, what's really going on with the organization. So that was very um, encouraging in terms of this group's um, strength and what were people are doing and influence that we could have a lot of good I think one of the things that, can, that, that was interesting to me is that I'm not sure what percentage of our impact projects are climate projects. And I think that as a group, um, maybe we need to think a little bit more about the interactions between our projects, how one connects the other. And then also, I mentioned this with PRM as well, like what does it mean to be a group? What kinds of tools can help us have greater impact as a group? You know, more of a movement and less of a bunch of little flotillas, more of an armada. How do we move from being flotillas to an armada? Because it's clear that there's a lot of strength in this group. Um, I'm really encouraged to hear about how big the turnout was at the other summit. 
um, and, and um, it's very interesting. This is a very interesting time and opportunity for Cardano, of course, as Ethereum is clearly a censored network. As Solana fails, uh, Cardano, I think they said that they were the second largest NFT market now in the world with Solana failing. So it's a huge opportunity for this network, which has moved slow. And I would say in general also about the Cardano network, um, there's a, there seems to me to be a lot less sort of innovative, wild ideas there. A lot less craziness and like, oh, we're going to do this, you know, and that a lot more feet on the ground, boots on the ground, uh, seriousness about the importance of identity, self-sovereign identity, just people with like a much more conservative kind of outlook about what's needed to make the network work for better and for worse, right? Like, I, I, I didn't see a lot of huge new ideas, but I did see appropriate progress in a good direction on a network that actually works with um, and and with mature people. Did this work? Like there were, I didn't meet any jerks. It's so unusual at like a tech conference or a hype. There wasn't a lot of hype. There weren't a lot of egotistical blah blah shilling my project, being pushy. None of that stuff that I see at most of the crypto conferences. Um, so my reflection to it was really positive. It just felt like a serious group of professionals. Everybody dressed business casual. It wasn't the usual cycle pump, uh, you know, wear the same t-shirt every day. Kind of, it was, people had their act together. I liked it. I mean, I thought that was a very good sign of professionalism, the type of crowd that Cardano is bringing together. And I would like to see more innovation, but in some ways that's always going to be a trade-off. Like you're going to be cutting the bleeding edge or even, um, you know, put together something a little more solid. And I think that as we're talking about these really important impacts on the climate and stuff, um, that's important. I wasn't able to get really great straight answers about how good the smart contract stuff is, but I didn't go too much to technical facts. So maybe I don't the technical facts, I'd look like more of that. I really want to get more of a sense of how it is to build on Cardano versus other things. Um, I have a little bit of a concern about um, like Plutus and uh, what was the other one, um, Haskell, like how much of a shortage there is of programmers for that is a pretty serious issue, I would say, um, because those are required by the network. And so I would say that the network could take off. Those two languages are going to need to be developed, you know, like we're going to need to develop more resources in that area. We've got all these Solidity developers, so it makes it easy to develop on the end, you know, the mm -hmm. VMs and Plutus and, um, and, um, Pascal are a lot less popular. I was actually on the bus on the way home. Um, I ended up talking to a guy at the bus stop. There was only two of us going from Switzerland to the Balkans by bus. And, um, you know, he's learning, um, I think he's learning Haskell. And he said, and he's, he's, and he's not a senior programmer even in his own profession. And he started getting job offers basically. They're like, you're learning Haskell? Come over, come over, come over. Like there's a real hunger for that. So anyway, that's kind of my assessment of the ecosystem and also of, I really think it was an incredibly powerful group. Um, I feel really happy to be part of it. If there's something about this group that makes me feel welcome, that makes people feel a sense of belonging, um, it was just really a tremendous amount of warmth, which is quite unusual in the technology field. And uh, I just really want to appreciate this group for that. I felt really warmly welcomed. I feel really I barely even have a foot in the group and I just feel like everybody's made me feel a part of this thing. You know, I'm not the average age or gender of a tech person in the crypto and nobody seems to care at all about that. It's just a really amazing group that makes people feel like they're inside of it. And there's a really good culture of communication, a really positive culture of communication in this group that is, is, um, I don't take that for granted. So I just want to tell you guys like what an amazing job you're doing here.
Amazing. Thanks, Grace. Yeah, guys, it's amazing. You gave me a lot of chills when you spoke because uh, no, it's really touched. And um, one second, yeah. And it, I mean, it was, yeah. I mean, we feel that. You're, I mean, everyone is welcome, and you feel part of us. And you know, people, I think, appreciated a lot the feedback you gave. Very direct feedback, right? You, you know I mean, by being so nice to give a direct feedback. <laughs> to people and not kind of going around. So I think it's appreciated and you were a big part of the success obviously of the session we had. And thank you for all the help there and work there. And uh, and yeah, and I saw you, you know, once we connected between a couple of people. So you ran to bring Alison in and everyone in. <laughs> it was so great to, to see you getting engaged. Uh, yeah, so you really gave the chill and, and yes, I think, I mean, this what what you said. I mean, the first of all, our session people came to me after the session and say, I mean, thank you very much. Even people from AIM, right, that we know forever, like Phil, he said, I mean, he, you know, he knows us forever. He knows C for C, and he said, I mean, Yoram, this was amazing. He said, even the the best concrete session that I was in in the event, right? And Victor, right? It's people that we know forever, but they're not engaged and they know us, but now they really see what we are doing, and then people that we don't know, you know, that came and say, I mean, that was amazing uh, session, and, you know, so many great projects and, uh, and and stories and so on. So I mean, that was great, and and really, I think together with CF, I think we really have a partner with CF. CF took a big leadership in this event, uh, and I think they did a, an incredible job. Uh, organizing this event in quite a short time. Um, and they they, have, uh, they are looking into making impact. I said, it's my feeling, and supporting impact. Mm -hmm. And Fred, Frederick is very serious about that. And you have a good team of people, you know, Alex, Jeremy, Pierre, I mean, Sandro. I mean, they're all great people that want to make impact. So, so it made this a little bit easier, right, for us. I mean, we behind the, behind the scene, we organized quite a lot of key sessions there. And we're onboarding, you know, in the process of onboarding key companies that, you know, again, Goodwall and Seedstars and the microfinance, you know, all the top, you know, IO and Imargo and CF people were in these sessions with them, right? Um, except of Charles himself, but we had the uh, John O'Connor from my from my and um, and um, all the Imago management, and um, which also focused a lot on Africa, uh, and have some good funds, and and uh, obviously the CF and uh, people, and um, I think there is really interest for, for to bring on board more concrete solutions and to support it. Um, so yeah, I mean it's really, really amazing. Uh, obviously to meet in person and that was amazing, but it was really amazing. And and you know what the efforts all of you guys did behind the scenes. I mean obviously Melanie, Nori, uh, Julieta, um, Julieta uh, TP. You know everyone is doing. Um, Laurent. I mean everyone is really doing the work to to support. Um, yeah, it was amazing that that you all came to the session. <laughs> that was great. Um, yeah, and, and yeah, people just jump in to help. Peter that recorded it, so we'll have it live. Uh, I call it a recording of the session, all right? So we can cut part of it and share in uh, different media. Uh, that would be great to kind of maybe share an independent session. This was at the summit. This was at the summit, kind of, and, and share it and get some more traction. I really think now it's time that like, we need to think together how we bring our voice stronger. Because hey, in this summit, we organize a lot of sessions here and obviously all over the world. Maybe we need to actually list it all together and, and share with everyone, right? Actually, the, the real impact that uh, that uh, happened in the summit. And anyway, so that all positive, I'm still speaking here, but it was amazing. And thank you very much, Grace. Um, for being there and supporting us on that. Yeah.
Awesome. I just want to pipe in and sorry, Nori, you might have started to talk. Juanita has, has got a flu. She's been working very hard. She jumped in with Kate and I to work on the, the flyer that I gave her like 20,000 pictures and logos and all sorts of stuff. And um, together, the three of us put together a kind of a pretty awesome flyer. And that was a neat experience of collaboration in the background. Um, so Juanita, maybe if you want to share, and then I think you need to go take some chicken soup and go take a take a break. Yeah, no, I said Julieta, but I mean Juanita. My name is Cusa. Juanita. Hey, pardon, por favor. Sí, me lloran. I am dead. Me estoy muriendo. But it's no important for me. This meeting is very, very important. Uh, Jordan, see, excuse me. Quieres que traduzca Juanita, si quieres decir algo. Oh, no, le estaba preguntando a Jordan que qué pasó con él y se lo estaba diciendo en español. Ya dije que, que me estoy muriendo y que para mí es supremamente importante, que no importa porque para mí es más importante estar acá, pero me estoy muriendo. <laughs> She feels really sick, but she's glad to be here. This meeting is really important to her. I'm very, very, very sick. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for uh, your appreciate my work. And thank you for everyone, for everything. And I love this community. I insist in, in C4C is the very most important project of Cardano. Uh, I love you guys. I my congratulations for the summit in Lausanne. Thank you, Juanita. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, and obviously, you. Daniel, Sebastian, all of you. And yeah, thank you very much. I mean, it's amazing. Again, no one said to do this. I mean, this promotional, right? And you just did it. And it's um, with Melanie and TP and. Yeah, I mean, it's, everything like this brings so much value and we just do it, right? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. So that being Thank said, I did, I did drop the link and I found this powerful tool called the link tree and any kind of recordings or photos will add to that and keep, keep this going. Any action plans that we have, um, let's connect people to the impact community because uh, you know, like Lawrence said, you know, in this in Toronto, what's kind of like, well, people don't know who we are, we don't know what's they don't know that this stuff is going on on Cardano. And uh, let's make sure that we can stay connected. It's like giving a business card yeah. to somebody. So use the link tree and um, upload photos, recordings, and I'll keep that updated as much as possible. I am in the middle of preparing to leave on a trip, so I'm going to go off video and uh, just listen in. But it was kind of exciting to be at home uh, and still be very much a part of this. I'm going to get my daughter to Photoshop me in a bunch of those photos, by the way. <laughs> so if anybody can do that, let's maybe maybe we do that community as a community, get photos and Photoshop them in these groups. Because, you know, it's one thing to turn up in, in, in person, but the people behind all those people are so many more, so many more faces. So, mm -hmm. and we are a virtual worldwide community. Yeah. Okay, I'm going mm -hmm. on mute. All right. Let's Photoshop hey, Charles into there. <laughs> yeah, it'd be nice to have a photo album because there were so many events around the world and so many people were able to meet each other, so. I've I I collected what I could off of Twitter. I should have been, you know, putting who sent it in and, and stuff. I stopped, I didn't do that at first, you know, so we can give credit to the people that sent it in. But uh, yeah, that form will upload those things. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. I'm getting an update on the Vancouver summit. Uh, we had probably close to 100 people there too, maybe a little less. Um, and it was really great to see the community turn out in the Vancouver space to listen. And I kicked the whole thing off with a presentation on impact projects in Catalyst, um, starting with the C4C community, sustainable ADA, and um, Little Fish. And then I went into concrete projects. 
and just really fast went through some um, just to show that there are people building on Cardano doing impact related stuff. Um, and thanks, Lawrence. A lot of your material was helpful for that too, because um, you put some thought into it. And um, I highlighted some of the same um, people. Dylan sent a couple slides for algae tokens. So we were able to talk about that and a bunch of other things. So, um, and the same result, people had no idea that this kind of stuff was happening in the community. And a lot of people were just like, whoa, I had no idea. And they were really fascinated and interested in what was going on. Um, and then I created a link tree that kind of highlighted all the different projects and shared that um, so people can connect. But um, yeah, I think it's a great opportunity to get out there because I don't think a lot of people know that we're doing a lot of good impact related projects in the space. And, um, yeah, so it was a great opportunity and it was always great to meet people face to face and make those connections. So, yeah, it was a good time. Cool. Amazing. Thanks, Mary. Mary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Please don't. Please don't. Sorry. There's something about the Mexico City Summit and how important it is what we do is um, the point of the summit being in Latin America was to make as much noise as possible to raise some eyebrows into the Cardano Foundation and people on IOHK. And I think it really did the job. Um, a lot of people I talked with the Cardano Foundation really told me they had seen me before working with C4C. And I think that's something that's really valuable. And actually they have asked me to, I have some connections in Mexico and we're looking at bringing some projects, some blockchain projects to state and federal level into Mexico. So I think working with people like you and having the communities really help uh, bring opportunities to uh, uh, countries like Mexico. And I really want to say thank you to everyone. You also reminded me, uh, Dr. Mihela and I communicated quite a bit during the summit, you know, from DC, um, sending the recordings, those are uploaded on Linktree now. Um, and she's part of IO Impact uh, Lead. So, you know, having a connection like her, she loves us. So, uh, and anything we can do, I always tell her that whenever she needs us, we'll do one of those, what is that crowd thing called again? Flash mobs. Flash mob. Whenever she needs us, we'll just show up as a flash mob, Cardano for Climate flash mob. <laughs> so just beware, you might be called on for that. Okay, I'm back to work. Awesome. Any other sharings from the event? So this turned into a nice little conversation and we are recording it so we can share this out. Um, and I don't know, what do people feel? Do you want to jump into the mural board and write things down or has this been enough just talking it out? Um, I really think that um, one one theme that came here by everyone is that we probably not we are too modest we are not communicating enough <laughs> <laughs> and um, and I think the that maybe should be kind of a big focus for us. Uh, I mean, if we saw how CF communicated about the summit actually right so aggressively, uh, which was great right in a positive way I'm saying it. Um, yeah, I really think that we need to kind of into communicate that a lot. And again, I saw Charles today. I don't know if you saw his tweet from today. He tweeted something like, "In this uh, down down uh, period, uh, disturbing period, uh, it's good to show some positivity." And he shared the the video that he had with Snoop Dogg. And I said, "That's what he's sharing." I mean, <laughs> come on. I mean. That's the positivity you see in this moment. He, he was not in the, he didn't come to the conference. So <laughs> obviously our message has to go there uh, stronger. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Maybe we can just, yeah, do the retro verbally, but yeah, that's one section that we should you know, talk about. Or it's what always a good idea to put some stuff down here. I think some of these, we may as well. Like you got the mural board there. I think yeah. like there are some exactly some of these things just around communication. Cause I agree, like 
um, a lot of us, this is, was new, right? And um, just how do you use social channels? Like, so like I might, you know, my background is, is e-commerce and, and big corporations. Like when, when, it, when something happens, like a launch, there's a whole plan. Like, and I'm not expecting us to do that, but my point being is that there's a communications plan. Like there's things that are actually planned out in advance on how to communicate um, when and where, what channels and all that stuff. And um, so obviously I'm, I'm not saying we, we do to that extent, but a communications plan is, is, is useful. Like that's just one as an example. And, and I just, you know, even myself, I, the projects I was involved in was kind of last minute, oh, we should probably do this, let's do that. And it, it can be helpful if you have a communications plan prior to an event. So that might be something. Mm -hmm. Put that on the board. Yeah. Uh, anyone else has ideas too. Yeah, feel Sorry. free to add as we go, but I'm adding I'm, the conversations as well as I hear them. Yeah, I'm going to skip off Miro board. Uh, Yoram told me about uh, Blake, friend of ours from Cardano from Climate from the beginning. JPEG store, 1% uh, going to uh, climate action. So, you know, yeah. if, you're, if you're thinking about NFTs and all this craze and stuff that's going on, uh, here's... Blake and his sister, we know them both, and uh, pretty cool that this is happening in the background. So there's a good. Chance. So definitely, the, I mean, we need to create collaboration. Just, just to tell everyone the story. So they came a year ago, and they had an idea to create a nature token. And we say, come on, and we started to interact with them and help them. And then Blake said, hey, I really have to stop. I need to. I see there's we're missing a marketplace for NFTs. I really have to create that, and then I come back to, <laughs> to Karan for climate. And he started this JPEG store, which basically became now, I mean, 90%, I think, of the NFT marketplace of Cardano has been that is there. And, um, and he's, he's definitely, so he signed up for 1% for the climate um, and he communicated with him. We definitely need to see how we, you know, we put seeds and how we engage with all the people going around and, and then continue to collaborate with them. Um, in order to now, now that he got to this position, how can we promote more, you know, NFT related projects for climate, for example, mm -hmm. and see like this in this platform. So yeah, just we need to have this discussion. I'm sure there will be other, many other projects that will succeed from people that, you know, came through here, mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. it's just one nice example. It'd be nice to have them at a community meeting to present JPEG store and and then maybe discuss further collaborations with C4C. Yes. Let's invite him for next Wednesday. It's a great idea. Let's do that. All right. Cardano, fam, Cardano fam is presenting as well next Wednesday or okay. the Wednesday after, but let's, uh, we've already promised to Juanita. Yeah, sure. it's a problem. Thank you. No, yeah. so we do the week after. So, pardon. Yeah. Uh, Juanita? Tell me. ¿Qué no quieres decir algo? Ah, no, que cargan usted en la, la próxima semana. Lo vamos a presentar en inglés. Y vienen todas las chicas. Sophie, Mercedes, Meriu. Esperamos que Denis y yo. Y esa es okay, la so we can ask Blake. We can ask Blake to come the week after. And. Um... Mm -hmm. And even in his Twitter, I shared with Twitter, like he said himself, CEO of JPEG NFT, fighting climate change with NFTs, and so on, that kind of, so we definitely need to engage him. Mm -hmm. He's a busy man now, but okay. But, uh, I think we, um, I think we also need to think about what we're providing to the community. One of the things that I think is always a danger with these kids is we fall into this um, point of being kind of like a charity, like, oh, well, you should care about climate, and you should care about climate, and you should give us money, and you should care about climate. And I think we need to think a little bit more about service that we can also provide so it's not just all about marketing ourselves, because the messaging is one thing, but like you know, the JPEG store is a really perfect example, right? This guy didn't keep um, thinking about how do I change, how do I just do something that's going to be good for the climate, but how do I do something that's good for the community as a whole, that's missing as a community as a whole. And there's a few things that are really clear from 
um, that we have core capabilities here. And some of the core capabilities have to do with moderation, um, encouraging one another's projects, giving each other honest feedback, having um, a really positive way of communicating among us, creating teamwork, creating equality, even when we're competing for the same funds, we still have created some kind of environment here. Um, so there's something around the social structures that are here that is something that we could contribute to other communities, for example. And I've been thinking also about the physical spaces that we've created and how do we start, like I said, become more of an armada and less flotilla. So how do we bring together all these different conversations into, I don't know whether that's going to be a Discord channel or I have some ideas about that. But like, and then maybe create the communications network for our community and then for the Catalyst community and then for the foundation and then maybe for everybody as a whole. How do we take some of the tools that we're developing for ourselves? Some of them might be social tools, like how we communicate, and some of them might be coordination physical tools. And how do we expand those out and not just become like, oh, we're nice and we should save the trees, but we're a source of knowledge, we're a source of wisdom, we're a source of tools. And I think the Gimbal Labs guys are doing a great job on that. Like, you don't just come to a Kadama for climate guys to give them money, but you come to them for ideas and you come to them for a dispute resolution and you come to them for wisdom of different kinds. And I think, you know, how have they used tools like meetup? How have they used tools like whatever we do? And so I think we, to also start looking at ourselves as being in a reciprocal relationship, not just a marketing relationship. It's, I've been in marketing my whole life and I'm fed up and I really would like to be in a much more reciprocal relationship where we're not just sharing what we do, but actually we start being more integrated with the rest of the network. And then they can show us, I mean, now, you know, like the word of mouth marketing and the willingness to promote us will increase as we show our value to the network. And, and when I was talking to Mercy, it was just one of those things that was really obvious to me that we have this international network and that the vulnerability of Ethereum, like nobody on Cardano likes to say the words like Ethereum, which is really like a little bit pulpy and weird, but um, the Ethereum network fell down because too many of their nodes are in the United States. We have the resources in this group to make sure that our SPOs don't end up in one jurisdiction. I don't know if any other network within the Cardano um, community has that. And so we actually have services that we can naturally provide that are really useful. And so it's not just marketing, we really have resources that the Cardano as a network and as a protocol needs. And that's something that I think we can do, not just a better job marketing, but a better job developing ourselves as a resource center, not as a center just looking for resources. Yeah, very good point. You have the mirror open, I know. I'm sorry, I just entered I here. If you, can you share the mirror, please, Link? Yeah, there it sure. is. Let's see what you are writing down. I'm just adding notes. Feel free to add stuff as we go. Um, yeah. I think we can just do a conversation and people can record stuff that stands out. Um, yeah, I think we, we've had, a, we're starting to have a lot of conversations now around um, C4C just had our one year anniversary. We've built a really nice community um, and have become kind of this container for magic to happen. Um, and it feels like a lot of people are in the space where we want to see this now like mature to the next stage, whatever that is. So we need to start talking about like we can't keep going to Catalyst for funding to help the core team keep going and doing this. So we need some kind of way to map out our strategic value. What's our value proposition? What are possible revenue streams um, or other things to keep this thing sustainable over time? Because we want this organization to keep going and we don't, 
want to rely on the vagaries of getting funded in fund 10. Um, um, and we also don't want this to be 100% pure volunteer effort because a lot of people put a lot of time into this to make it go. So yeah, and we are helping projects get their messaging done correct. We're helping them with their proposals. We're connecting them with each other. There's value there that we're creating and driving. So we need to start thinking about how do we turn that into a sustainable model where there's an exchange of value happening. Um, and I think that's kind of the next step. And people have started talking about it. So I'm really excited over the next little while what we come up with and how we see that emerging from kind of the seeds of C4C as a community. And I love Grace's kind of terminology, make it an armada or a movement um, moving beyond the original group. And it's, that matches our kind of spiral, Fibonacci spiral of the snail. Like we started with the first one, but now we're going to the second loop and the third one and continuing to grow out from that core. But yeah, I think it's, uh, it's a beautiful space to be in and conversation to have. And I'm really looking forward to it. Um, so in the vein of retrospective, one area that we haven't really filled out a whole lot is, um, were there any things that didn't go well or things, opportunities for improvement that, um, we should call out? Um, I think there were a few things mentioned earlier. I actually put them in the action points instead, but around a lot of stuff felt a little last minute. We were kind of rushing and everybody was like frantically doing stuff through Telegram and other channels to get flyers and link trees and marketing done. But um, are there any things that we should really highlight that didn't sit well with people or was a bad experience? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, please, Go ahead. please, Grace. No, please. Felt like I would have liked um, like a bunch of JPEGs to send out. I, I like I didn't you know, like that I could put on my Twitter feed to announce it probably even earlier. And I didn't see any like little, just like little, like just post this, don't have to think about what you're posting. It was hard for me to find out, yeah, what was going on with that. Was it getting broadcast? Was it not getting broadcast? Or even just um, publicizing other people's events. I feel like maybe if we just had one page where you can download some faces of yeah like other conferences that i've spoken at like they'll send me the jpeg with my face in it and like you know advertise to everybody that you're speaking that kind of stuff would have been cool yeah no definitely i mean that's i think i think that's the key 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 point is that i mean amazing thing happening how we take it out how we you know before after <laughs> during whatever that that's really a key element that we need to put much more attention and um, in my view, and Juanita, I mean, can play a huge role in that, and uh, by helping organizing and so on. So that that's really for me a huge part. And second, I mean, Melanie came with the idea to put all the actions in um, in a link tree. I think that was a wonderful idea. Also thinking about before. I mean, we we need also always to try and have actions, right? Okay, so what action we can make, and somehow communicate also them. Um, so that's. Um, Hasta luego, Juanita. Juanita, sente, sente bien, repose bien. Gracias, bye. See you. Bye, bye. Bye, bye Juanita. Um, yeah, I think that's also, is, I mean, we used to start with that always. Okay, in the end of every event or so on, we used to have action, right? What action we can take? What can we do? What each one can do? So I think expanding on that on the link tree that everyone every all the time if you we have always i think that's some a project so marketing and then the actions should be all, always live projects happening all the time um kind of that's my view but anyway um yeah these are good good points i think I, it's hard to say, you know, what didn't go well, because a lot of it went, was, was really quite surprising or miraculous, miraculous right? So, um, so it was, it was kudos all around. Um, again, I thought it was great. I'm gonna, you know, special shout out for Melanie staying up crazy hours. <laughs> She's a, clearly a, an unsung hero. Uh, that was great. So she seemed to have a total 
she was the captain in the sense of, um, you know, in the backstage, which was good, which was great. Um, and yeah, your arm and guys everywhere. I think that would look pretty cool. Like I, I wasn't able to attend. Um, uh, I was able to, to, to see the climate for the Cardano for climate session that you guys had. And um, it was great. It looked, looked awesome. And it was really great, right? To have people like Sean come out. And like, I think this is just so such great to have a connection there. And then obviously, you know, it's, yeah, and so that's, that's just, you know, that's awesome. So I think this is going to continue to grow. And um, I think everyone's looking forward to the next one, right? That's, that's, that's great. That's a good sign of success. Um, mm -hmm. cool. In terms of integration, this is more like an improvement or something that was missing. I was impressed by that SSID thing that what's her name had. Allison. You know what, I'm talking about? what Allison? Like if we had all had that on our phones and been able to show people our QR code and exchange our data with people, that would have been cool, and it would have been really awesome for her that we're using her product. So maybe like thinking before such events, like how can we use each other's products? Even thinking every day, how can we use each other's products? Like it would have been so cool if we all had that. And then everybody would be like, oh, you know what? There was this group of people, they had this thing. Like I did this thing with like five different people. And so like, yeah, I did it with five different people. Hey, let's do it with each other. We could have actually been the service provider for the whole thing if we had coordinated that with Allison and all done it in advance. We totally yeah, could have made her like really shine. I love it. This one and then Little Fish Survey, which they didn't really promote. I mean, there was a lot of cool projects that could have been kind of promoted and coordinated before and make much more impact for all of us, 100%. Mm -hmm. Very, very good yeah. point. Maybe we also, like, I'm trying to think how we can make that um, something that our members would ask from us like why didn't allison just ask us to do that or little fish ask us to do that like if we had some like you know request board or way to make it really easy for someone to make that request of us as a group like i said that would have been easy to do mm -hmm. you know, and it might have even been like okay we're gonna have an official qr code that everybody has on their phone you know, that no matter what, you know, when you meet somebody, you can give them your personal business card and also be like, and I'm part of Catalyst for Climate. I don't know where we would send them. Like maybe we'd send them to Allison's thing, or maybe we'd send them to the survey, or maybe we'd send them to our website, but like some kind of like, or maybe even like just little stickers that are like, I'm with Catalyst for Climate. Like some little thing that made us look like a group would have been super cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think more of those kind of conversations before the summit with different groups would be really great to see where can we collaborate, can we use each other's stuff. Um, we did do a little bit with Little Fish, and C4C was pretty heavily involved with helping them prepare for their Ikigai um, thing. So I think that was one collab that was really nice. I don't know the results of that or if it was widely um, used. No, they, they didn't. I mean, I don't know the result, and obviously they're wonderful, but I, I don't think they really promoted it. Um, I think, again, one of the things that came up in the show is obviously a lot of people came and say, I mean, we gave them a platform to speak, right, also, mm -hmm. which was very good. I mean, a lot of people thank for that because kind of first platform to speak. So I think a lot of the project, like us maybe, are not good enough in marketing what they do. <laughs> Right, and I kind of reserved. Although I mean, little fish. I mean, these guys are amazing, right? But it's all. So we need to find ways how to really take it out there and connect and help to market. And maybe through collaboration is the right way to do it. I mean, maybe activating stronger sustainable ADA somehow to push uh, stronger and help them kind of push the messages. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah, I don't know. But, um... I, could totally, I could totally imagine, like when you were saying platform to speak, I could totally imagine us doing like almost a side event during the event because there were plenty of classrooms, you know, like kind of an yeah. ongoing open mic kind of thing where people get to present their, it would be interesting. Like I could imagine us setting up something that would be like I mean... a full... One idea, if you really want to go crazy on marketing, but we can actually create 
we can create an impact Cardano event, right? Everyone ever make NFT event, this event, we can create the impact Cardano event where everything is focusing on impact. I don't know if that makes sense. I mean, I'm just, just trying to sing marketing now for a second. <laughs> but uh, so, we, I mean, we, we did, you know, we did actually before something called Impact Fest. Uh, and that was a huge success. I mean, we had all the communities collaborating. It was online though, right? Mm-hmm. And kind of get a lot of attention and that was that was massive. And then came a lot of imp- local Impact Fest out of that. Um, it was kind of a week, but yeah. Anyway, just thinking out loud, but yeah, definitely next event we could have, uh, we could we could have maybe asked the foundation to migrate in the next event, there should be, let's say, half a day, which is the impact impact day, or one day, which is the impact day in the event. So, right. so was, there, was there any booths there, guys, that, you, that the summit there in Switzerland? There, there were, yeah. There were, there were, I, I didn't even go to see them, to be honest. Yeah. But there were well, some booths. They weren't, like, there was not a major booth thing going on. There were, like, three booths. Because I think one of the one of the things that, again, being at the Cardano Summit, is you have this opportunity to introduce it to new people. So I think the, the, the challenge is, you know, you know, is getting the word out, right? And so it, I, don't know, I think that's an advantage of being obviously I mean, present in like the Cardano Summit or some of these other summits that are coming up, you know, these community events like CNFTCon or whatever. And, you know, whether it's a booth or not, like I think it, it's something that you can reproduce. You can, you have a presence is there, you've got some posters. And, and people, if they're just walking around, they see that up and, and they're just going to get a little bit probably more, you know, just if someone's there, they're just going to start talking to them, right? And we know how, how powerful that is, um, that just, you just happen to see it. So I, I don't know, I don't think there was any booths, I don't, there, was a, there wasn't any on our conference, it was too small, but it is a, it is a thought and it's not a huge effort, right? You, you just volunteer, you've got some, it's, it's allowed people to just, you know, walk over, like I've been at conferences, you walk around and what's that? And you just go talk to someone and then you know, the light comes on. Oh, I didn't know that. Or so that might be something again for another conference. It doesn't have to be that yeah. one or it could be that one or it could be any of these other ones that are coming up consensus, all this stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Now you need some, maybe some money. So this is another question you guys were talking about, but I don't think it would be obviously presentations are good. That's, that's important, but the booth is, not a lot of commitment. Um, yeah, I mean, the, awesome, yeah, right? it's a it's a good point. I'm not sure it's a good point. I mean, it was not the kind of a boost type conference in my view. Again, there was like some boost, but I, I personally I didn't go to visit them. But I don't know, so I, I cannot comment. But but yeah, it's a good point. I mean, if there if there is a boost and people are going through. Always, you get more visibility. So definitely, the people that don't know about that, no, you know. yeah. They don't know. Yeah. And yeah, Asa, if you, yeah, it's good to have you here. Uh, yeah. If you want to say a couple of words. Yeah, please. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have a whole little speech here. But yeah, just like one to said, like really uh, nice meeting you all. It's a, it seems like a really lovely group of people. And I look forward to coming to the next meetings. And if you want to connect, I just posted my LinkedIn to the profile. Uh, in case you're awesome. interested. Have a good night. Bye. Yeah. Perfect. We would That's love fine. to have you, and maybe next meeting you make a quick intro about you and what your interest and kind of connect. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, we'll do. Absolutely. Thank right. you. Perfect. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. I think um, just I just want to say one more thing. Like I love the idea of doing a uh, an impact conference or a climate conference, um, and I'm really. I would like to brainstorm that a lot because I've been really curious, especially because we're a climate based group. How do we do like new kinds of combined in person and online conferences in a way that would feel more integrative? What might that look like? Like an hour off and then a summary and then an, a physical activity, which is like with the food, you know, like I would really like to experiment with that format because. I feel that it's really important for the industry as a whole, as we're talking about climate and impact. Flying everybody to Lausanne is not an, you know, like that's not good for the environment. And how do we have the regional conferences that feel like one conference together? I've been so curious about that. And 
and during the pandemic, we just went online. And then as soon as we could see each other again, we were like, yay! And we didn't experiment enough with that combined kind of a format. I feel like there's something very rich there that the grace, could yeah, there was so last year's conference was like that. Um, so meaning that um, we had the there's a local meeting and then they live stream stuff from you know the main uh, headquarters. It wasn't that great. Um, it, uh, the challenge is, is is obviously with the video streaming stuff to make that all work seamlessly. It's not easy. I'm not saying it can't be done. Um, so I'm just talking from my experiences. It, th this I found this year was 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 better because the local summit was all about local, and so you could do everything there. And then obviously there was the offline, the online for the people that you know couldn't couldn't make it. Um, so I, that, for me, that was a better experience than the previous year, where it was a bit more integrated um because it didn't make a lot of sense for me to you know i was at this conference yet i was just streaming and then the quality audio wasn't necessarily that great um and it was I, it lost a bit of the, the value of being of the in-person part so i don't know that's that just my experiences i'm not saying it can't be you know, it couldn't couldn't work um and then my my wife who does events you know definitely the it, it is always a challenge to, to to have that good synchronization it can be done but uh and, and you know, definitely maybe explore it. But that's just my two cents. And I totally, I, I totally agree with everything you're saying. Yeah. You know, and I think there's more experimentation to be done to see how it doesn't end up with just like a video screen and then no video screen. I feel like they're anyway. Um, but I think the other thing that I have to say about that is I'm a little like as we're talking about marketing, I'm thinking, okay, but what are we going to onboard them to? And I think that what I was talking about before, thinking about what services are we offering and how do we onboard people in a way that isn't just like, I went to a lot of cool meetings and they were really nice people. Um, and isn't just like, well, I think obviously people come, I mean, I came because the was like, oh, I know how to get funding from the Cardano Catalyst, right? And that's not why I stayed, but that's why I came in the first place. <laughs> Um, but I think we need to be more than that. And I think, um, yeah, and, and I want to think about that more as a group. Like, let's say we're really successful in our marketing efforts and lots of people come. What are we actually offering and how do we make it, like, how do we make it a community? So, yeah, I think that that's really important before we onboard too many people to be like, okay, what are they going to get when they come here? Because mm -hmm. we are awesome. Like I, I keep coming and I'm super busy. So I know it's an awesome group, but I feel like we need to think about that a little bit better. Like what will it look like to onboard somebody? If the if there is a conference coming up, like, oh, we're organizing a conference, then we always have something to tell people to do, right? Mm -hmm. But if there isn't, what are, you know, if there isn't another round of fun because when the round of funding was going around, there was a lot of things for people to do. So I think we need to you know, artificially generate at least some sorts of goals. Hey, we're putting up a website together. Do you want to be part of it? Do you want to video your story for the website? You know, it, it could kind of be anything that's a joint project that we're doing together. Because, um, and that keeps people feeling like they're producing something and that they're moving together for the goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are really good points. And I think Yoram has tons of ideas that he's been throwing around. We have a few funded proposals actually that we need to wrap up around um, Cardano for climate. So there's opportunities there um, and lots of collabs and things happening. So yeah. And the other thing is a lot of us are in the onboarding space, but also the accelerator mentor um, incubation. So help people craft business plans and sustainability, kind of map out the vision and the plan. We work with a guy named Harry from Edify that has a really good model that he uses. And we have the one up, one down women kind of loosely kind of connected that could also set up some mentoring networks. And really, I think one of our biggest value adds is to bring impact into the space, but also really figure out how to make them sustainable and, and successful over time rather than um, just onboarding. Yeah, we just got by the way. No, please, please. Mm -hmm.
No, we just got, by the way, there is a, I just uh, get an email now on uh, for CF and for me to, to collaboration on a session that is happening in Davos uh, about uh, Web3 and uh, for SDGs. Um, there we go. Exactly. <laughs> there are going to be events that are going to happen, not just that one. And so, but it's a good point. Yeah. Oh, Grace's point. So what, what are, what are we trying to offer people? That's, that's important. We need to be succinct. Um, but yeah, I, I think, yeah, this is probably just the start. <laughs> I think, yeah. And it does seem like something like a website or a hub for ourselves and the link tree just start to that. So maybe the next step is like, I would create that hub. But this is where you go if you want to find out about everything that's going on here. Yeah. I'm calling it a hub rather than something else, but I think because it could it's probably will end up being a website, but that hub could be, you know, could be whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Stop the hour. I have to go, guys. So, yeah, me too. Anyways, good chat. Yep. And, uh, We'll talk yeah. to you later, okay? Yeah, yeah Laurence, thank you for... I, by the way, Laurence, just to tell you, I sent, uh, I bought some uh, bum nut milk and sent it to Charles, so... You did? Charles. Okay, I saw the order come through. I didn't know who it was. I wasn't sure. <laughs> That's good. So right. we sent it to Charles and... Uh, <laughs> let's see. That's amazing. I'm trying, good stuff. I'm All trying right. to run after him. Yeah, okay. Uh, Thanks, guys. Cheers. Thanks, everyone. Thank you very much. Yep. Bye. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Have a good day.